friends, welcome back to my channel. I have another fun DIY for you. So today we're going to make something kind of shabby chic, totally kind of vintage, and a little bit of farmhouse too. It's kind of a mix of things. So I picked up some supplies from multiple different places, Dollar Tree, Tuesday Morning, Hobby Lobby, and I do believe Michael's and Walmart. So we're going to be using what you see here. And again, the description in the description of this video, you will see the supplies listed. So one of the things I always love to recommend is that people substitute the things that they want to use in place of what I personally use. But I'm just going to give you some ideas of what you could do. So here we go. We're going to start by taking our napkin, and it is a three-ply napkin, and I just kind of place the letters over this to see how many napkins did I actually need. Initially, I thought I would need three napkins. I don't know why, but I pulled apart one of the napkins so that you could see. So there's going to be three different plies, and you might need to use a spray bottle to kind of dampen your fingers to kind of break apart the plies and then set the top ply aside because that's the one you're going to want to use and then I took this uh, laundry bag from the Dollar Tree it comes in a three pack but you can do use just one and I cut it into half so we're going to use the half that doesn't have the zipper and then I have these Jenga tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and I just poured out a package of them and usually I keep them in a Ziploc bag but I poured them out and I started placing them over the over the netting from the laundry bag and just to see how many Jenga blocks I would need for this project and so basically I'm just kind of frame this out I, I was kind of trying to go with what looked like chicken wire but it was fabric <laughs> so but you could totally see through it it was just something different and so that's kind of the look we went with and that home sign there was all together and I got it from the, the Dollar Tree and I just dismantled it in two separate letters. So you're going to start by gluing all of your Jenga blocks together, the top row, the bottom row, the side rows, and you're going to create um, strips like this. And then we're going to stain them and then we're going to glue them in to the netting or the laundry bag. So just make sure you glue them all together. I do use a Sure Bonder glue gun or a Ryobi, and then I also use Gorilla Glue. And then one of the things I like to do is I take paint and I use a baby wipe and a water bottle, and I dilute my paint and I stain with the chalk paint. So just dip your finger in with your wipe and then spray your wood. And you only have to do it a couple times. It pretty well dilutes it. And so what it does, is it opens the pores of the wood so that the stain seeps in or the paint. And then all I do is once I wipe it on, I take a clean wipe and then I just wipe off the excess. And I try to stain my Jenga blocks all together in like a clump so you're not doing each individual row. It's so much easier. And then you're going to be able to wipe off all the excess because you don't want it to be super thick looking like it's painted. You want it to look like it's stained. So you'll just probably need a couple of wipes for this and you could use a t-shirt rag or paper towel and then turn them all on their side. So each time you switch over to each side, just stain them all up together, group them and then stain them and then just keep repeating that process. So one of the things I discovered in making this, I just want to tell you this really quick before we get to this part is uh, the netting is fabric. So when you go to glue it onto your sticks, it's go you're going to see that there's going to be some ply and some give. So I actually do not have it shown here, but I end up using some popsicle sticks. So you might want to have those. And that's going to help sure up the back of this project. And you'll see that. And so I'm just covering the letters with some white paint from Waverly. I think it's plaster. And the reason I did this is because the napkins, when you take apart the plies, are kind of thin and you could see the colors through. And so I didn't want you to be able to see the r random colors. So I just painted them all white, including the M. I did go over the M, even though it was already white, because I wanted the shades to be the same. So I just gave it a quick little douse of paint and then let your paint dry. And then what I'm going to do is put Mod Podge down over the paint separately. Normally what I would do is mix the Mod Podge with the paint, but for this, because this napkin is so thin, normally I would do that with some tissue paper, but this napkin was so thin. So I just decided let's go ahead and do the paint, let it dry, and then let's do the Mod Podge and just do it in layers like that because I didn't want to get the paint 
with a Mod Podge on my fingers and then it would be on top of the napkin. So I just wanted to kind of point out that little tip for you guys. So add Mod Podge to every single one of your letters. And I did cut the napkin into four squares equally. And then I use a rolling pin to help smooth out my napkin. And I don't go over it a whole lot. I just kind of press it across and roll it a couple times. And that helps work out any of the bubbles and it keeps the edges sealed as well. So just lightly go over it. Don't go rubbing, just pat it and then set it aside to dry. And you're going to repeat this for all of your letters. Now your letters could be a different word, but um, I chose to go with home and I love these napkins. I usually find these napkins at Tuesday morning. You can get some really cute ones at um, Hobby Lobby sometimes and Marshalls and occasionally I find them at Home Goods. So check your nearby stores and see what you can come up with. But this pack was like $4 for the whole pack of like 32 napkins. It was like crazy amazing and they were super cute. All right, so I'm using my heat gun and the temperature setting 120 and I have an adjustable heat gun. And uh, we're just making sure that everything is dry because we're going to be sanding the excess off. And I did use, uh, I think it's a, I want to say it's a ceramic cutter. Uh, it's for carving and stuff like that. But my grandma gave me that tool you see laying over there by the rolling pin uh, years ago. And I use it for crafting. I don't really do ceramics, but she did ceramics for years. And so I'm going to use that to help me kind of shape out my letters. But be sure to make sure that your tissue paper and Mod Podge is completely dry or you will risk tearing your napkin or well, tissue paper napkin. It depends on what you use. And then I just carved around each letter and then I just sanded them smooth. And I have this flexible sandpaper. I found it at Lowe's, but they don't carry it anymore. You can get it on Amazon and I'll try to find the link and give it to you, but this sandpaper is absolutely amazing. I do use a sanding sponge occasionally, but I love the flexible sandpaper because you can get into the little grooves and it's plastic and it doesn't tear or rip like the paper sandpaper does. But how cute are these letters? They're so, they're, see, it's like shabby chic, but kind of farmhousey, kind of has a vintage feel. Uh, also kind of boho too. I'm a sucker for the boho in the farmhouse, especially like right now. That's totally my style. Now I did coat these over the top with the Mod Podge just to seal my napkins because I'm going to be using the Waverly Antiquing Wax just to kind of give the letters a little bit of dimension because that netting is very white and I wanted these to pop a little bit more and have a little bit more dimension. So just go around each one. You don't have to coat it very thick. Just be very careful not to go crazy with your uh, paintbrush because you can actually pull up the napkin and you don't want that to happen. And then of course, let it dry. And then make sure that whenever you're drying these that you don't use a high temp on your heat gun because it can melt the glue, the Mod Podge and bubble it. So I have my antiquing wax and I just use a lid and I use a water bottle to kind of help dilute it. And I use my craft paper as you know, you could just paper towel or a coffee filter or something, a paper plate. And then I just lightly dusted over the letters where I wanted it to kind of be aged a little bit. And then if it was too much, you can always use your baby wipe to pull back some of that that gets a little um, darker where you don't really want it very dark. And then as you need to, you can see, just uh, go around, add some water to your uh, antiquing wax, which is water... It's water-based anyway, so it's not going to separate. It's okay. It's not an oil-based um, antiquing wax. But this is what I typically do when I antique things with this glaze. And then you can already see that they, they're they already having this really cool look to them. I just thought that this turned out so stinking cute. So next, I have these pink beads that I got at Dollar Tree. Uh, and I wanted to use them as the hanger. And I have this metallic spray paint that I got, of course, at Lowe's. And I'm using a red Solo cup. And I just put the beads in there. And, of course, I just sprayed in the cup. I'm using that tool to mix it up just a little bit just to make sure we coat it. And then I dumped them out. And just to be sure we got good coverage, I took another little coat of spray paint across them. And then I dried them with my heat gun. 
Now, I did not show this in the supply photo, but I have a darning needle for, for like quilters or people who sew with yarn, like thick yarn and stuff. And that's how I thread my twine through the beads. So you will need to have a darning needle or something of the sort, or you could hot glue the ends and push them through the beads. But um, that's a, typically how I thread my beads. Now, this is the part I was telling you about earlier where I'm going to have to use the popsicle sticks. I didn't anticipate this. And y'all, I'm going to be real honest. If you have a silicone mat, please use one because I did not use a silicone mat. And gluing through this netting was a little bit difficult for me, but I do love how this project turned out. So I just use my glue fingers that I, um, that helps me push the glue into the fabric. And then each time you go around, just make sure you're pulling it a little bit tight. And then I had this brainy idea. Why not just glue it this way? <laughs> and then it stuck to the paper. So I had to pry it completely up. It was, it was, it was, it was a learning experience for sure, but I had a great time making this and I hope that you make it too. So just find your form with your Jenga blocks, uh, test your placement for your letters to know how big of a square you need. And then here's where I decided let's glue everything to the paper. <laughs> it was a mess. So if you have, like I said, if you have a silicone mat, please use one. I did. It was a little bit difficult. You guys, I'm not going to lie. So uh, this girl will be investing in a silicone mat for crafting for sure, because it was just, I had to skip through a lot of this of peeling apart papers and stuff. But um, here you can see the paper is stuck to the glue, but it, we made it work. It's on the back side. So just to sure up your fabric and your Jenga blocks, I took these popsicle sticks and I just glued them completely around to make sure that it was tight enough. So when we put our letters on, it uh, was more support. Because the letters are are not heavy, but they do have a little bit of weight to them. And it was starting to get a little flimsy on me. And I was I just wanted to make sure that it was sturdy moving forward. Cut off all of your excess laundry bag. Uh, I never I don't know why I just thought this would be a really fun idea. And then here's another huge mess up. So I decided I was going to glue these to the laundry bag right to my mat. <laughs> and so it stuck and I did get it off, but holy smokes. And I was like, what in the world? So please let me know if you've ever done this before. Have you ever just thought, what was I thinking? Making your projects and just had to learn as you went. So I ended up lifting up the frame to apply and then I flipped it over and then use the little glue finger thing, silicone glue finger, to uh, glue our dots down. But I learned on the first one what not to do. So I'm placing these uh, to where they just say home in a square. It's not the full wide word. And I thought, this is so stinking cute. I was so excited. So the next thing you're going to do is once this dries, uh, make sure that your glue is completely adhered to the netting. Don't just lay it on there. Make sure you turn on the backside and make sure the glue gets kind of squishy into the laundry bag. And then we're going to add a metallic hanger to this and you will need a staple gun. I don't think that I showed that in the supply photo in the beginning, but if you have a staple, uh, like not necessarily a staple gun, but like a stapler, that is super duper helpful when you're attaching your hangers. So I learned from my Facebook friends, I, that's what I call them, they're my Facebook friends, uh, that in order for this to hang evenly, you wanna use even number of beads so I think I used um, 20 beads, I'm pretty sure, 15 or 20, maybe it was 16 beads. Nevertheless, I ended up having one left over and I had to count to see, I'll have to double check and let you know in the, the description, but I had to pull one aside because it was not going to hang evenly. So all I do is glue to the twine and drag my bead across it so that they don't shift and move. And then I tie a knot at the end of my twine for my hanger. And then I just staple over the knot. And Or you can glue it. You could do whatever you like. But for this, I went ahead and stapled it because I felt like it kind of had a little bit of weight to it. And I just want to make sure it was sturdy. So add you a couple staples. And then 
I think this thing turned out so precious. You could use whatever napkins or scrapbook paper or tissue paper you like. You could even use fabric. You could use round beads, square beads, oval beads. You don't even have to use beads at all. You could use ribbon. You could use raffia. You could add bows to this. There's so many different things you can do. But I loved how this turned out. And um, I will say make sure that if, you, if you're if you using staple guns with craft projects that you use the shorter staples and not the longer ones. I was kind of afraid they were going to go through. But y'all, look at this. How cute and adorable is that? And if you're watching, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. Let me know what you think. Turn on that bell and I will see you in the next DIY.